in the Indian Ocean. Uh, that is the same target as we had on Flight 3, so everything should look pretty similar uh, all in that regard. Closed out. And we just heard the call out there that all prop load is closed out. So at this point, uh, there is like 10 million pounds of propellant on board Starship, which is incredible. It's getting very exciting. We are just about two minutes away from T0. And as Jesse just said, we are under two minutes away. So prop load is complete. All the fill drain lines into ship and booster have closed. Right now we're doing the pushback, so clearing out all those ground lines of propellant, and that'll be completed over the next couple of seconds. We're coming up on that T minus 40 mark. Again, not planning to hold. If we do or if we get a hold after we pass it, we can snap back to that T minus 40, and then we can stay there for about 30 minutes or so if any other issues crop up. Once we pass T minus 40, a lot of things happen, both on the vehicle and the ground. You're doing, it's running a lot of its own self checkouts, venting different tanks and pressure lines throughout the vehicle. Uh, we essentially built that 40 seconds as that's about how much time it takes for the vehicle to take all of those actions, which is why we hold there. Uh, but all of that happens minute. automated. You do a final checkout of the TVC, the thrust vector control, how we're going to steer. And then we see liftoff. So we're under a minute away. Forty-five seconds and counting. Good event game at. All right, now as we close in, we are past the 40-second mark. So let's listen in. Flight director is Ty Huntington is going to take us through one more time for a Starship liftoff. Two minus fifteen. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Vehicle is pitching down range. All right, 30 seconds into flight, the, the rumbles are still building here in the Raptor's nest. We're seeing 32 out of 33 engines lit on the Super Heavy right now. Coming up shortly is going to be Max Q, that maximum aerodynamic pressure as we go uphill on the vehicle. Max Q. All right, we just passed through Max Q, so we're going to continue on up. We still have about vehicle is a supersonic. minute and 30 seconds until we get to stage separation. Starship now flying faster than the speed of sound. All right, so you got a couple of views. You got some ground trackers in your top camera there. You're looking down from the top of the booster in the bottom left, and then a camera in the top flap of the ship looking back in the bottom right, so getting a couple of different looks as Starship heads uphill. Uh, once we get the hot staging, a lot of things happen all at once simultaneously. We're going to light the engines on the ship, starting with the RVACs first and then the three center sea level engines before we're separated. All of that exhaust gets plumed out the side of the hot stage, and then the ship will separate itself. Uh, all but the three center engines Put on the, the booster are, gonna are going to shut down, so the booster never stops its thrust while we go through this hot stage maneuver. After that, the booster is going to do its flip, start heading back, and then the ship will be on its own power on its way to space. So that should be coming up in just about 30 seconds from now. As of right now, still looking in like 32 out of 33 Raptors lit 
on the booster. And we'll start to see those stagger down. They're going to turn off in banks, so you'll see the lights on the bottom left screen of the engines that are active start to, to turn off in different groups, and you'll see those three center ones lit. Booster engine cut off. Ship ignition. Stage separation confirmed. Boost back burn start up. Acquisition is Houston. Houston. Hot stage confirmed. Ship under its own power. Booster boosting back. Looks like all 13 are lit. Kate, we've got a booster on the way back to the Gulf and a ship on the way to space. Acquisition signal, Stennis. Ship chamber pressures are nominal. Ship power and telemetry, nominal. All right, the first stage currently performing the boost back burn. This is expected to last a little over one minute. This propels the booster back toward the coast, taking it to a landing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. As you can see on your screen in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, we were only using the 13 center engines uh, from from basically from from here on. Boostback burn shut down. Heard confirmation there of good boostback burn shutdown. H2 tank pressure is normal. Boostback burn shutdown. Lots of excitement. So right here, this is. <laughs> This is our view of the jettisoned hot stage. Uh, as we mentioned, this is a temporary fix to help uh, reduce the weight of the booster. Uh, so we have the super heavy booster. Future iterations will have a lighter weight integrated hot stage structure that won't need to be jettisoned. Now, after we jettison that hot stage, this, the booster will begin to uh, attempt its water landing in the Gulf. In the meantime, the ship will coast for about 40 minutes or so up to an altitude of 214 kilometers. And after its coast phase, it will attempt a controlled re-entry, including a flip maneuver and a landing burn just before splashing down in the Indian Ocean. But as a reminder, we are not attempting- trajectory nominal. Good news there, trajectory is looking good for the ship, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. At this point in time, as you can see, um, we have no engines lit on the booster. It is coasting back toward uh, the Gulf of Mexico for a water landing and ship under power of all six Raptor engines. There's three uh, sea level and three vacuum Raptor engines uh, that are lit, as we can see on your screen. These views have been looking incredible. <laughs> Super Heavy has been performing beautifully today. And you can hear the crowd is very excited about it. As a reminder for Booster, the primary goal today is to do a landing burn and a splashdown in the water. And we are just about 30 seconds away from that landing burn expecting to begin. And an incredible view from the forward portion of the booster. This is basically on top of the super heavy booster where we have jettisoned that hot stage. So I now we can see signal. this incredible view of Earth as it's making its way back down to the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, the booster is using the four hypersonic grid fins to guide itself through atmospheric re-entry. And we are expecting that landing burn here. And we will be, we will be exciting, igniting 13 engines. And this is a great view on your left-hand side is a view, is three views from the booster and your right-hand side a view from the ship. And you can see those grid fins on your left-hand screen rotating and turning okay, to guide the booster. And there's that landing burn. That landing burn just begun. And you can see the water below. And we have 
Ship has entered terminal guidance. That was absolutely incredible. The Expected first successful Houston. splashdown of the super heavy booster. Love seeing it just tip over <laughs> into the water <laughs> before losing that footage. Now the next milestone is coming up in about under a minute. The ship is going to shut off its Raptor engines, ship engine cut at, off. which we see right there. As we mentioned uh, before, today's test flight is not an orbital flight, but rather one that demonstrates ship, the Starship's orbital capability. So right now, we are under power with just the three center Raptor engines. Expecting those, and just there, we can see that those have also successfully cut off. FDS is saved. What an incredible Nominal orbit insertion. <laughs> oh, there's great news there. The call out we were hoping to hear. Amazing views once again from Starship. We have our second Starship in space. These live views being brought to us by Starlink, which is on board the ship. Dan, what an incredible view we have once again. So exciting. We got another ship in space. I'm I'm like still jumping up and down. I like this whole building was going absolutely insane when we saw the the booster hit the water. I mean, wow! Uh, congrats to everybody that's just been putting in insane amounts of hours and everything to make this thing a reality. And I feel like every single time we do one of these, we're seeing something wildly new. We got to see the hot stage jettison uh, and the and the booster in the water, but. Just to recap real quick uh, over everything that's happened. So we lifted off uh, at 7.50 a.m. only nine minutes ago. How has it only been nine minutes? 7.50 a.m. Central at 12.50 UTC. We saw 32 of the 33 uh, Raptor engines on Super Heavy make the ascent. We had successful cutoff, successful hot staging. All six engines on the ship powered it all the way into a, a, a nominal orbital trajectory. Um, and we've already been getting some live views uh, from the ship on board. Uh, after that, the booster was able to do its boost back burn. Oh, this looks like we're actually getting some views from the ground still, uh, potentially from Florida, uh, of the of the ship as it's up there. Um, yeah, so that yeah, that's a view from some of our tracking cameras on the ground in Florida. Uh, but the ship, we just heard. Uh, successful orbital insertion, so it's right where it needs to be uh, and is now going to continue on its way to coast until it comes to reentry. But I mean, the booster, successful boost back burn, jettison the hot stage, and then a landing burn. It looked like we saw 12 of the 13 engines light up and then that first ever soft splashdown in the water. So uh, a whole lot still to come. Ship now on its way to its primary objective of entry. That's going to be coming up. Uh, in just a, just under 40 minutes from now. So a lot still to come, but wow, what a nine minutes to start this mission off. So can't wait to see what entry is going to show us, uh, but that launch was incredible. Back over to you, Jesse and Kate. Wow. I am still trying to catch my breath here. <laughs> that has been... That was some incredible views that we have never seen before. It has been nonstop since liftoff. And with the booster having completed its job for the day, we're going to take a, a short break for about the next 28 minutes. And we'll return while the, uh, we're going to take a break while the ship is continuing to coast before re-entry. <laughs> exactly. Uh, as with Flight 3, Starlink may enable us to talk with the ship through re-entry with no communication blackout. Uh, we are still testing Starlink during this phase of flight, so of course nothing is certain. However, if we do have views, we will be sure to bring those to you live. Views such as the one, oh well, that we 
Well, of course, because I said it, it went away. So we will, uh, we will try to bring those to you live. Exactly. Views or no views, we'll see you back here at C Plus 40 Minutes for coverage of Starship's re-entry, flip maneuver, landing burn, and splashdown. Expected loss signal, Key West. <laughs>